In our previous lecture, we learned that a function is like a spatial value in JavaScript. So just like any other value, we can assign a function to a variable. And just like any other value, we can also pass a function as a parameter value. So that is also possible. And when we pass a function as a parameter value, that function is called as callback function. And a callback function is basically that function which is called by another function. And we will understand callback function with an example. Then we also have something called as anonymous function. An anonymous function is that function which does not have a name. And this also we will understand with an example. Now keep in mind that JavaScript is an event-driven programming language. This means that instead of waiting for a response before moving on, JavaScript will keep executing while listening for other events. Let's try to understand it with a simple example. So here I have created two functions, first and second. Now we know that if I call the first function first, and then if I call the second function, then when this program will be executed, since we are calling this first function first, this first function will be executed and it will log first function called. And then we are calling the second function. So after that only, the second function will be called and it will log second function called. So the order in which we have called the function, in that order, the functions will be executed. So if I save the changes, you can see in the console, first it logs first function called and then it logs second function called. If I call the second function first, in that case, the second function will be executed first and then the first function. So if I save the changes, first you will see this message, second function called, and then you will see this message, first function called. Right, but let me move this second function after the first function. Okay, so this is how generally a JavaScript program works. It executes the code in the order in which we have called it. But sometimes in our code, we might be writing some logic which is going to emit an event. For example, inside this first function, what I'm going to do is, I am going to use a JavaScript built-in function called set timeout. Okay, now to this function, what we do is, we need to pass a function there. Okay, so here I'm passing a function here, and then we specify a time interval. Here I'm going to specify a time interval of 1000 milliseconds which means one second. So you see, to this set timeout function, we are passing two arguments. The first argument is a function, and the second argument is an integer value. The second argument is the time in milliseconds. And from within that function, from within this function, which we are passing as the first argument to this set timeout, from within that function, I am going to log this message, first function called. Now, what has changed here? Here, first of all, if you see this set timeout, it is a function. And what this function will do is it will wait for 1000 milliseconds. And once this 1000 milliseconds is complete, after that, it is going to execute this function, which we are passing as the first argument to the set timeout. So here, this set timeout, it is going to wait for an event to happen. Now, what is the event? It is going to wait for this 1000 millisecond to complete and when this 1000 millisecond will complete then we can say that event has happened the time interval has completed so once that event has happened then only this function will be executed now here when we are calling this first function first it is going to execute the logic of this first function so inside this first function we are calling this set timeout function and this set timeout function is going to wait for one second before it executes this callback function. Now here, since it is going to wait for one second, JavaScript will not stop and it will move to the second function and it will start executing it. So JavaScript is not going to wait for one second and after one second, it will execute the second function. Instead, since here JavaScript has to wait for one second, what it will do is it will immediately move to the second function. It will execute it. And once the one second is complete, this function here, it will get executed. So if I save the changes now, even though we are calling this first function first, and then we are calling the second function, if I save the changes, you will see that second function called, and after one second, it logs first function called. 
Now here, it's not that JavaScript did not execute our function in order we wanted to do it. It's just that JavaScript did not wait for a response from the first function before moving on to the second function. So why I am showing you this? Because you can't just call one function after another and hope that they will get executed in the right order. And callbacks are a way to make sure certain code does not execute until other code has already finished execution. And we use a callback function whenever we want to execute a code after some event has happened. For example, the first argument, this function, which we are passing to this set timeout, it is actually a callback function. And this callback function gets executed after 1000 millisecond completes. And who is going to execute this function? This function will be called by this set timeout function internally. So remember that a callback function is that function which we pass as an argument to another function and that function gets called by the function to which we have passed it as an argument. Let's try to understand it with a practical example so that it will be easier to understand. So let me go ahead and let me remove all this code from here or maybe I will keep it for your reference. And here, what we will do is we will create a function and let's call this function do homework. Okay. And this function, it is going to take one parameter, which will be the subject. And from within this, let's go ahead and let's use console.log statement. And what do we want to do here? Here, we want to log a message saying that started working on, and then I want to display the name of the subject homework okay so this is our do homework function now if i call this do homework function and there let's pass the subject as maths if i save the changes it says started working on my maths homework so it is working as expected now what i want is i want to create another function and i am going to call this function as homework finished okay and from here I am going to log a message saying that finished my homework. All right. And then what I will also do is I will modify this do homework function. And there I am going to specify another parameter and I will simply call it as callback. You can call it anything. Okay. It is not mandatory that you need to call it as callback. You can call this parameter anything. And what we will do is we are expecting this callback parameter to receive a function so once we have this started working on my homework after that i also want to call this callback function so to call a function what we do after the function we use a set of parentheses right so i am calling this callback function and now when we are calling this do homework function for the subject parameter we are passing maths and for the callback parameter let's pass this homework finished function now, when we are passing this function, we should not use a set of parentheses like this because here we don't want to call the function. Instead, whatever this homework finished function is storing and it is storing the definition of this homework finished function. So we want to assign that definition to this callback. And from there, we want to call this function. So now if I save the changes, what will happen? First, it will log started working on my math homework. And after that, it is going to call this callback. Now, what is this callback storing? It is storing homework finished function. So this homework finished function will be called and it will log finished my homework. If I save the changes, you will see it says started working on my maths homework. So it is coming from this line. And after that, we are calling this callback. And this callback, it is storing this homework finished function. So this function is getting called. And from there, we are logging finished my homework so basically here to this callback parameter we are assigning a function we are passing a function as an argument for this callback parameter and then that function is getting called from within this do homework function to which we have passed it as a parameter so such function is called as callback function a callback function is that function which is passed as an argument to another function and it gets called from that function.
we are not calling this homework finished function from outside instead we are calling it from within a function so that's why in this case this homework finished function when we are passing it to this callback parameter it is a callback function i hope you got the point now as i mentioned earlier we use callback functions when we work with events in javascript and javascript is an event driven programming language so most of the things which happens in javascript it is based on some event and we are going to learn more about callback functions and events in great detail in this course when we will start working with dom elements from our javascript code all right so this was about callback function now we also have something called as anonymous function so here what we are doing is when we are calling this do homework function there we are passing a value for the subject parameter so in this case when we are calling this do homework function we are passing this maths as the value for the subject parameter and we are passing this homework finished function as the value for this callback parameter right now here we have first created this homework finished function and then we have assigned it to this callback parameter but what we can also do is instead of first creating the function and then passing it to this parameter here itself we can pass a function by using anonymous function syntax and anonymous function is basically that function which does not have a name and anonymous function since it does not have a name you can only use it once so here to create an anonymous function we use function keyword followed by a set of parentheses and then a set of curly braces like this and inside these curly braces you can write the logic for that anonymous function so here i'm simply going to copy this and paste it here so you see here we are creating a function while calling this do homework function and we have not provided any name for this function so since this function does not have a name it is called as anonymous function and we cannot use this function multiple times it can only be used once so now i don't need this homework finished function at all i will remove it and now this function this anonymous function will be assigned to this callback function so if i save the changes everything should be working as it was working earlier so we see the same output but now what we are doing is for this callback parameter since it is expecting a function for that we are creating an anonymous function and then we are assigning it to this callback parameter so you can also move it in separate lines to make it more readable okay so this first argument will be assigned to subject parameter and this function this anonymous function which we are creating here it will be assigned to this callback parameter so i hope now you understand what is a callback function and what is an anonymous function so we use anonymous function whenever we want to assign a function to a parameter and that function logic should be executed only once and again you will see all this with examples in our coming lectures where we will start working with dom elements for now you just need to understand the concept if you have any confusion regarding callback functions and anonymous function just hold it till the time we start working with dom elements once we will start working with dom elements everything will become more clear this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day